Mr. President, colleagues, let us all remember we are meeting here while Palestinians in Gaza are under the bombs. Remember that you are speaking while families are being killed, while hospitals are coming to a halt, while neighborhoods are being destroyed, while people are fleeing from one place to another with nowhere safe to go. I urge you to choose your words carefully and to act accordingly. For all those mobilized against an even greater man-made humanitarian catastrophe or of a regional spillover, and these are worthy goals, we say, stop the bombs or both will happen. Stop the bombs and save lives, as the President of the General Assembly has indicated. All lives, lives of children, of civilians, of 2.3 million civilians in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, in Gaza, a father tells his daughter about the birthday he was planning for her and asks her not to miss it. A mother laments, my children died before they had a chance to eat. The thoughts that cross the mind of a mother in the face of such grief, 3,000 children in Gaza were killed by Israel in the last almost three weeks. I repeat, 3,000 children, innocent children, angels killed in Gaza during the last three weeks. A man embraces his mother and pleads like a child. Come back, I beg you. Come back and I will take you wherever you want. He hugs her and can let go. But there is no time to mourn. More death is on the way. 1,700 women were killed by Israel in the last two weeks. A young man wrote, we will not leave Gaza. We will only leave Gaza to join the heavens. A few days later, he did. 7,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel in the last almost three weeks. 70% of all those killed are women and children. Almost all killed are civilians. Is this the war some of you are defending? Let me repeat, is this the war that some of you are defending? Can this war be defended? These are crimes. This is barbarism. If you do, if you do not stop it for all those who were killed, stop it for all those whose lives we can still save. Jinan, a little girl under the rubbles, shouts at the people coming to rescue her. What took you so long? There are 900 Palestinian children under the rubbles, alive or dead, wondering what is taking so long wondering if any help is on the way. Anas, a little boy who is known as Anus, crawled from under the rubbles, not to find light, 
but more darkness. Devastations and death all around him. His ordeal has only started, not ended. 1,600 Palestinians are under the rubbles, and no one can reach them to save them or bury them. A doctor speaks of a term coined during this war, wounded child with no surviving family. 80 Palestinian families have lost 10 or more of their members, sometimes up to 45 members of the same fami <coughs> family were killed. 18,000 people are wounded, many treated in hospital hallways, if at all, with no anesthesia. Paramedics who have been, who have seen death time and time again, break down and cry. This time is just too much. UN staff, humanitarian personnel, and doctors are standing their ground and paying the ultimate price for it. This memory is honored by some as if a natural disaster had killed them, not a UN member staff. As hospitals turn into morgues, doctors and patients alike wonder is help on the way? Is help on the way? They are not listening to the explanations of some leaders on why the war has to go on. They just hear the bombs. They just feel the blast. They just face all this death trying to survive or to honor the pledge they took to save lives with no means to do so. People are ordered to evacuate. They look at their children. Should we head south? Will we be bombed on the way or once there? Should we go to a hospital courtyard, a UN school, a church, a mosque, sleep in our car in the streets? but bombs are everywhere. What choices do you make as a parent when there are only impossible choices, when death is everywhere, devastation is, is everywhere? A man stands in front of his house turned into rubble yet another time. After a long pause, he asks, how do you bury a house? Israel has destroyed over 40% of all homes, making an entire population homeless and displaced. 1.4 million people in the hope to forcibly transfer them outside the territory. The Israeli foreign minister came to the Security Council and said, this meeting should conclude with a clear message, bring them home. For millions of Palestinians, there is no home to go back to. For thousands, there is no family left to embrace. Not by an act of God, but by the acts of a government represented here in this chamber. He spoke of families and their pain. There is not a single family in Gaza that has not endured epic suffering. He told you horrible it was to kill civilians. Just before justifying the killing of Palestinian civilians by the thousands, he spoke of the fear felt by people when rockets are launched, Israeli bombs, have not spared a single square meter of Gaza. He believes the difference between civilization and barbarism is who is doing the killing 
or how they do it. He believes the laws of humanity and of our international law-based order apply to others, but not to Israel. That they protect Israeli lives and allow the killing of Palestinians and taking Palestinian lives. He believes Israel can pretend it, it is abiding by the very laws it is breaching live on your TV screens and before your eyes. That if you say Hamas enough times, the world will not be able to object to wiping off the face, from the face of earth entire families, four generations at a time, or to a siege where you let in enough humanitarian aid to pretend you have a sense of humanity, but nowhere enough to address the immense needs that are grow growing exponentially as you keep bombing a besieged territory. He says, release the hostages and takes two million Palestinian hostages. Let me translate these numbers. Compared to the population of Gaza, this is the equivalent of 28,000 Israelis killed, including 12,000 children and 6,800 women, 72,000 wounded, 5.6 million displaced. Is it more shocking now? More unacceptable? More outrageous? Why some feel so much pain for Israelis and so little pain for us, the Palestinians. What is the problem? Do we have the wrong faith? The, the wrong skin color? The wrong nationality? The wrong origin? Let me address all those who have, in these past few days, explained why one should not call for a ceasefire? How can representatives of states explain how horrible it is that 1,000 Israelis were killed and not feel the same outrage when 1,000 Palestinians are now killed every day? 1,000 Palestinians killed every day. Why not feel a sense of urgency to end their killing? Nothing can justify war crimes, crime against humanity, and genocide. Nothing can justify the killing of a single Palestinian child. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why not feel a sense of urgency to end our killing? Nothing can, as I said, justify war crimes. You are setting us back 80 years by trying to justify what Israel is doing now. How naive one has to be, or how hypocritical to pretend they don't know Israel is voluntarily killing Palestinian civilians. Who can believe that those killed by Israel are for 70% children and women and that entire families were killed while Israel is trying to minimize civilian death? They kill all of us. They kill thousands of us and they say they are trying to minimize killing civilians. How would it look like if they were trying to maximize killing Palestinian civilians? If killing 7,000 is to minimize, killing 700,000 would be possible to maximize? We don't need you to offer us semantic reassurances about IHL and protection of civilians. We need you to honor these norms, honor these norms 
not recall them only to justify their breach seconds later. This selective outrage is outrageous and needs to stop and need to stop now. These people you watch in your screens for a few minutes a day, every night, while they are being slaughtered, they have survived decades of military occupation, a 16 years long blockade and five wars in the Gaza Strip. They built and rebuilt and rebuilt their lives and their homes again and again against all odds, despite tremendous suffering. They are walking miracles. How could you leave them to be killed once again? The answer to the killing of Palestinian civilians is not the killing of Israeli civilians. And the answer to the killing of Israeli civilians is not the killing of Palestinian civilians. Vengeance is a dead end. The only path forward is justice. The only path forward is justice. Justice for the Palestinian people. Don't distort the law. Don't bend it. Don't break it. Don't betray it to accommodate Israel. Uphold it and uphold it high. This is what we are here for as a United Nations, to save future generations from the scourge of war. Uphold it for the sake of all nations for the credibility of these United Nations. Mr. President, Wa'il al-Dahdouh was reporting on the massacres in Gaza. For those of you who do not, who is Wa'il al-Dahdouh? He is the field uh, correspondent of Al Jazeera in the Gaza Strip. As he's been doing relentlessly for days now, when he received the news of an Israeli airstrike that killed his wife, his son, and his daughter. He'd, he did something many parents do in these circumstances. He spoke to his son, waiting for an answer that never came. He told him, didn't you tell me you wanted to be a journalist? His son wanted to be a journalist, even though journalists are targets in Palestine. Remember Shirin Abu Akli? Now, the dream of the son will haunt the father. Wael said a few words that I want you to hear well. He said, They took their vengeance out on our children. He then said in a heartbreaking voice, Malish, allow me to explain, to explain it to you. Literally, it means that's okay. But let me tell you what I believe he meant. Let me do it in Arabic. تبا لواقع تقتل فيه غزة. What a world where Gaza is being killed again before the cameras of the world. Shame on all those who do not respect our humanity, our dignity, our suffering. All those who justify the acts of the killer instead of standing by the victim to all those who justify the crime and give condolences to the victim and explain that the killer is not responsible for the killing. Shame to all those 
who do not stand by our people in Gaza and put an end to the massacre. Shame to this forum. If a word of truth is not pronounced on it, shame to the one who will speak after me to defend the wrong and justify the killing of innocent people. There is no justice on this earth. We have God. We have only God to go to. Finally, I appeal to all of you, vote to stop the killing. Vote for humanitarian aid to reach those whose very survival depends on it. Vote to stop this madness. You have a chance to do something, to give an important signal. Choose justice, not vengeance. Choose to defend the law, not justify its breach. Choose peace, not more wars. Vote to put an end to two, almost three weeks of the worst double standards we have seen in decades. To restore some credibility of this place and the rules it is supposed to embody. Do not miss this chance. Lives are hanging in the balance, and every life is sacred. Please save lives, save lives, save lives. Vote for our draft resolution, and I thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished Deputy Prime Minister. Oh. I now give the floor to Israel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, we are gathered here in this hall today as a result of a resolution called Uniting for Peace. Sadly, this emergency session has nothing to do with peace. Every member state here today who is convinced that we are about to discuss yet another round of conflict in the Middle East, another dispute between Israel and the Palestinians, is wrong. The October 7th massacre and what ensued has nothing to do with the Palestinians, nothing. It has nothing to do with the Arab-Israeli conflict or the Palestinian question. This is not a war with the Palestinians. Israel is at war with the genocidal jihadist Hamas terror organization. Only it is the law-abiding democracy of Israel against modern-day Nazis. These are the facts. Hamas do not care about the Palestinian people. They do not care about peace or dialogue. Hamas has only one goal, to annihilate Israel and murder every single Jew on the face of the earth. 
Their original charter makes this very clear. I'll read you a few lines. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it. Another quote, there is no solution for the Palestinian problem except by jihad. Another quote, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight Jews and kill them. Friends, on October 7th, it became clear to the entire world that Hamas's charter was not a compilation of empty words. It was an action plan, an action plan. Imagine a bright sunny day, clear skies, music in the air, young people are dancing, a rave, a concert for peace. Yes, for peace. It is really, it is early morning on the Holy Sabbath. The sun is just risen to mark a new day. It is also a festive Jewish high holiday, Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah means the joy of the Torah, where we celebrate the book of books, our holy Bible. And then, in one split second, this idyllic Eden became hell on earth. The peaceful morning air was pierced with the wail of rocket sirens. Thousands, I'm telling you, thousands of Hamas mortars and rockets rained down indiscriminately on many Israeli cities and villages. But the rockets were only cover for the pogrom, the pogrom that followed. Barbaric Hamas terrorists invaded Israel from the sea, the land, and the air. They came with one purpose, one purpose only, to savagely murder every living thing they encountered. Hamas Nazi murders went from house to house with hit lists, a thoroughly planned, willful, premeditated attack. They brutally murdered civilians in their beds. They drove pickup trucks with machine guns, yes, we all remember, just like ISIS, and fired blindly at hundreds of young people at a concert. 300, 300 were burned alive or butchered in that concert. Much of what remained were clumps of flesh and, and bloody limbs. Parents had to bring their children's toothbrushes for DNA so they could figure out whose limb belonged to who. These Hamas monsters raped women and children, parading naked girls that they raped and bodied that they defiled through the streets of Gaza, while thousands, and I'm telling you, thousands, you can see the footage, jeered and cheered. The savages tortured small babies. Just like the Nazis, Hamas terrorists removed infants from their cribs. Yes, we have it on video. Swung them repeatedly against the ground until their skulls became a pulp. Children were murdered in front of their parents and parents in front of their children. I've seen a video of a terrorist filmed by him, by himself who tossed a grenade into a bomb shelter with a father and his two young boys inside. The father was killed instantly, and the two boys ran out of the shelter screaming that their father is dead and that they want to be dead too. All this is occurring, believe it or not, as the monster who murdered their father calmly helps himself to the contents of the family's fridge. Yes, no horror movie compares to the pure brutality that Hamas carried out. No, none. Amit Man, a 22-year-old from Kibbutz Be'eri and a paramedic for Magen David Adom, Israel's Red Cross. She dedicated her life, literally, and you will understand why, to saving others. When the Hamas monsters invaded the kibbutz, Amit ran to the clinic to treat as many wounded as she could. 
for hours, hours, Amit worked nonstop trying to save lives. She knew the sadistic terrorists were outside her clinic because she heard the gunfire, but she stayed there. She was committed to saving lives, not running away. Finally, the terrorists burst into her clinic and put a bullet, a bullet through her brain. She was a Magen David Adom paramedic, the Israeli Red Cross, in uniform. But that didn't stop these savages. This is how the rescue teams found Amit. Ambulances were set on fire. Not one, many. Dozens of Magen David Adom medical teams were in, intentionally targeted on their way to tend to the wounded. And many other par paramedics were murdered. Barzilai Hospital in my hometown city, Ashkelon, in Israel, suffered direct hits from Hamas rockets. Not for the first time. Hamas has been deliberately firing rockets at it for years, for years, intentionally. Yet, not a single condemnation of this barbarity has been mentioned here. Not here, not by the Security Council, not by the Secretary General, and not by this absurd resolution. It seems that hospitals and medical teams only need to be protected as long as they are not Israeli. The hypocrisy is beyond belief, beyond belief. The brutal ISIS-like monsters abducted over 220 hostages from Israel and dozens of other countries, including babies, babies, children, persons with disabilities, the elderly and Holocaust survivors. Kfir Bibas, Kfir Bibas is nine months old. Nine months old and he is being held right now in Gaza as a hostage. Nine months old. What, what barbaric terrorists can do such a thing? And together with him, 30 other children. 30 other children. We saw Hamas's brutality in Israel. I cannot begin to fathom what horrors the hostages are enduring right now. As we speak here, 20 days have gone by and Israel is still counting her dead. It took weeks to collect all of the bodies. Some bodies are burnt like pieces of coal. It is almost impossible to identify them. Countless burned bodies have been found with ash in their throats, meaning they were still alive still alive when lit on fire, intentionally, by the Hamas terrorists. A clump of charred human remains that was burned beyond recognition was found. At first, the medical pers personnel couldn't figure out what they were looking at. Yet, after a CT scan, it became clear that they were two spines, not one, two spines bound together with wire, one belonging to an adult, and the other, the small spine, of a child. So just try to imagine that parents, that parents' feeling as they and their child were burning alive, burning alive. The painful screaming of the love of their life was the last thing they heard, the last thing. Do you not think it's unbelievable that this resolution here today and this session are not solely focused on Hamas's atrocities? When reading this resolution, Hamas seems to be missing in action. The drafters of the resolution claim to be concerned about peace, yet the depraved murders who initiated this war are not even mentioned in the resolution, not even mentioned. They see each one of you as puppet. They write a resolution completely devoid of any content related to the situation. They assume that you have already forgotten who it is that is responsible for the inhumane violence. 
and they just expect you to support it automatically. This resolution is a disgrace to your intelligence, a disgrace. It is unfathomable that such a resolution, one that doesn't even mention Hamas, could possibly be voted upon here. Let that sink in, please. Distinguished representatives, representatives, Hamas carried out atrocities, the likes of which we have not seen since the Holocaust. Yet, unlike the Holocaust, where the evidence we have is mostly black and white photographs and soundless footage, here the proof is in high definition because some of it is from, yes, security footage, but much of it is from the cell phones and GoPro cameras belonging to the Hamas Nazis themselves. Many may be asking, why did they film their sadistic violence? Well, I'll tell you why. Very simple. They filmed it in order to terrorize the Israeli public to release these videos and put fear in the hearts of the citizens of Israel. By the way, this is what terrorists do. They terrorize. I have seen much footage over the past weeks that will be seared into my mind forever, but there is one sight that I keep on seeing when I try to sleep. In the video, one can see a terrible injured civilian, bloodied yet alive, laying on the ground as a Hamas savage screaming, Allahu Akbar, repeatedly pummels the man's neck with a garden hoe in order to decapitate him. The man on the ground is an agricultural worker from Thailand. He's not Israeli, he's not Jewish. He was merely alive trying to make a living for his family. But he was decapitated with a blunt gardening tool. Horrifying. Israel is not at war with human beings. We are at war with monsters. Here is the video. Okay, we're going to interrupt that um, live address at the UN General Assembly. Some rather graphic footage being shown there uh, by the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. You were listening live, though, if you are just joining us, as I say, to the uh, Israeli ambassador to the UN, as well as...